Hey everyone, Achika here, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for a new DCUO base tour here on the channel. Yes, I said tour. Finally, I'm bringing out one of my bases that I've been crafting over the last two to three months. <laughs> I have two more done, uh, and then this one, so that makes three altogether, so... Uh, You'll be seeing those hopefully in the near future, uh, but for now I wanted to show you the latest one that I have done that I created with uh, Base Off in mind. <laughs> I made a dive theme. I, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to have fun too and just kind of have a sense of community uh, and uh, play around with a dive theme along with all the other contestants. So um, yeah, so this is my... My dive theme, my ode to the dive theme here, and what better way to show off a dive than with my tiniest, sprightliest little character here, Illyria, my nature wild child, which if you haven't seen any of her bases on the channel, go check them out after. I'll leave a link somewhere to one of them up in the description box here. <laughs> she has a bit of a backstory if you follow her videos on the channel, but uh, this one just seemed like it would fit her perfectly. It doesn't really go with her character super lot, but... Uh, just based off aesthetics alone, it kind of uh, works. So without further ado, I introduce you to Illyria's Bayou Maudit. <laughs> so we start off here on a very dilapidated dock where we have... Well, we found a dock coming from a road in the forest area, it looks like. Let's come across this. Tri-corner yards, it says. But it is, the bog itself is known as Bayou Maudet. The accursed bog. One that has stolen many lives to various things. Or so the stories go. So as you see, we have our, again, dilapidated bridge over some very murky, murky water. That is uh, also harboring a lot of debris and growing a lot of debris too it looks like from the barnacles and greenery here we have our willow tree <laughs> as well as the ivy uh, this used to be uh, a nice spot for a boat to uh, be tied up but it looks like uh, our boats have run aground <laughs> So let's carry on here. Ooh, looks like uh, we got some really uh, invasive species here in the bog. Don't remember this being in any uh, wetland sort of greenery books or flora books, flora, nature book things. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> At least not this size. I mean, there is bramble, don't get me wrong, but uh, of this nature, that's uh, that's questionable. Let's, uh, we'll be careful here as we carry on. It looks like there's a lot to be dodged and wary of. Uh, even more so now that our bridge has uh, kind of come in two. However, if we look over to the side here, we see why the bramble is how it is. Lex and LexCorp have been dumping their waste into the bog. Gah! And it's caused all the wildlife to mutate and die and wither and become things that it wasn't. Here, let's see here. I guess I think if we're really careful here. We won't be able to fall in. It looks like there's a little bit of a path for us to walk. I mean, I know that we're uh, we're very fierce predators ourselves, but I really don't want to tangle in whatever kind of water, you know, whatever kind of monsters are lurking in that water. I mean, we've seen what they do to the vines. <laughs> don't want to see what that could do to, like, a crawfish or something, man. Like, oh, man. It'd be like uh, if you ever play Elden Ring, like the giant lobsters. <laughs> So if we go over here to check out the barrels, we can see all the contaminants oozing out. We gotta be careful. We don't want any of that. But, uh, yeah. And the weeds, or the bramble, the vines growing out of it, too. Engulfing anything it touches. 
can't have anything nice. Damn it, Lex. I gotta do this. However, it looks like Lex isn't the only malevolence here in the swamp land. So we'll just we'll be careful of that. All right, time to cross this bridge. Let's hope that we uh we don't get snagged by any of our uh tentacly friends down there. Whoop. Ah, we made it. Nice. <laughs> Uh, however, it looks like other visitors did not make it. Oh, I mean, I'd offer him a hand, but, uh, I think that's all he's got left. <laughs> or so it seems. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll just, uh, you know, I'm sure, sure it wasn't that painful of a way to go. <laughs> And uh, over there we see a cave, too. A cave entrance. Uh, it is in the midst of all this water, so we won't go too far over there. But we will admire it from afar. Maybe a new entrance to a base uh, sometime in the future. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Potentially. <laughs> so if we go over here, we see more vines overtaking as well as some other plant life. Some Venus flytraps. Trying to get, uh, trying to get, uh, all the mosquitoes we possibly can, and trust me, and with the bog and the fog, there's a lot of mosquitoes here, I'm assuming. <laughs> I actually talked with Rill about this base, uh, before touring it, and he gave me the idea of using some small magic runes and some, uh, uh clock tower windows, so that's what kind of gives the fog its, uh, like the depth, you know, like it's not just in the water, it's kind of in the air too. <laughs> so there is a little uh, base builder, base builder hint. You can hide them behind the tree lines and make it look like it's got some atmospheric perspective going on. So thank real for that. <laughs> so as we get to the end of our docks, we find a bait shop as well as a little fishing hole. For one of the bayou's residents who sadly seems to have abandoned shop. And rightfully so, given how much pollutants are around. Everything seems to be overgrown. The once beautiful bog, or at least natural bog, that would yield crawfish and other fishing things to make a life off of now only hold eldritch tentacle beasts and I don't think those probably fetch a pretty penny at least to the average buyer I mean maybe this is uh you know maybe they could sell them back to Lexcore uh, or something but probably Argus would intercept them for you know with their track record of dealing with giant tentacle monsters <laughs> We can see the wrath of the Lexcore's pollutants here, especially. You can see that the, uh, the wildlife has definitely become akin to it, which is kind of sad. Though it is kind of thriving in its own weird, grotesque way. So yeah, let's take a look at this shop that the owner once had here. Looks like it was for bait and tackle. Ooh. Oh, and it too has become run down and uh, abandoned, it looks like. The pipes have burst, making it damp. Mold growing everywhere, as well as barnacles. The festering pollutants of the barrels have also taken hold, it seems like. Uh, growing akin to the bait buckets, given uh, it probably had a lot of bait left in it. <laughs> I mean, if there was anywhere this, you know, mold or uh, toxic goo was going to thrive, it'd probably be in a bait barrel that was abandoned and uh, had access to plenty of uh, moisture. <laughs> All the fishing plaques on the wall, too. The woods in disrepair. Yeah. More bait buckets that have gone bad. Same with over here. Ooh. I'm gonna be honest, even before I put the demon pods and stuff in there, that does not look appetizing. Look at that. 
Like, I mean, I know what shrimp... I mean, shrimp already and, like, you know, fish kind of have a weird color to it. But, I mean, come on, man. That's, like... That's, like, some gray matter crap in there. <laughs> I don't know uh, who would be wanting that kind of fish. <laughs> well... Maybe the attendant might be in the back still somewhere. However, I doubt it given how run down everything is. Even their bait buckets are all worn over back here. A chair, an old television set to pass the time. Well, let's go see what they got in the back room here. Maybe we could salvage something out of our trip. Whoa! Well. <laughs> It seems that our shop is not as abandoned as uh, we thought it was. It is, in fact, a uh, quite active, from what I can see. It seems our fisherman, or fisher person, has turned from, uh, you know, the bait and tackle life to uh, being quite the green thumb here training a malevolent plant army through voodoo magic and reverse engineering the growth to create plants to destroy Mr. Lex Luthor for hurting their business. Ah, we got the Ouroboros effect. Snake eating its own tail. Coming full circle. <laughs> so we got the, uh, the plants got to eat something, right? So it looks like we have a few, uh... Looks like we know what's on the course here, given the, uh, axe situation. As well as we got our mad chemist station here. To reverse engineer all the, uh, gross toxins that were in the lake. <laughs> and then mix that all up with some good old-fashioned, uh, voodoo. That you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that, everybody, is Bayou Maudette. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> like I said, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I got to show one of my bases. This was fun. <laughs> I liked the little, uh, I kind of was, uh, I didn't know where the base is going. I kind of just wanted to do a swamp theme. And, uh, then it kind of turned out to be this, like, little story about, uh, yeah. I knew I wanted to do a swamp theme that did, had something to do with voodoo. And then it just kind of grew to this, like, environmental disaster turned revenge story kind of thing. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the base. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, so, a couple updates. I'll leave most of the updates for the video on Friday. Uh, so we streamed the base off injuries. Uh, Sunday night, and I uploaded the VOD on Monday uh, for you guys to check out. And oh my gosh, all the entries were so good! You guys did so good! We got nine entries, and all of them were just absolutely fabulous. You guys are crazy good decorators. <laughs> Thank you so much for entering. I, uh, like I said in the stream, I didn't know where it was going, or, uh, yeah, like how many entries I'd get, and Wow, not only did I get a lot of entries, but all of them were absolutely magnificent. And you guys are great. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, like I said, uh, so Friday is when the announcements are going to happen. So you guys will get an extra video on Friday. That will be the winner circle, as well as like a little rundown of why I chose, who I chose, and some honorable mentions, and uh, all that good stuff. Um, and uh, then next week starting next week not only will you guys be getting the new base off uh contest entry for the months of june and july but we will be having three uploads a week <laughs> so there were nine entries to base off like i said so i'm planning on doing three a week until all of them are done because i would like to showcase everybody's bases in a fairly timely manner so that way uh it's not just me on a VOD, like, being, like, an overeager puppy really excited. <laughs> I could give a bit more feedback than just ooing and eyeing and kind of, uh, freaking out. <laughs> Which I guess is fun in itself, but, uh, 
yeah, we'll do a more proper like run through uh, of the base showcases. So yeah, so expect triple uploads for uh, the next weeks. I haven't decided what days I'm thinking though. Uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and probably Saturdays for the bases because I would say Friday, but uh, I'm going to do the base off uh, announcement then. So technically you'll be getting four videos next week. So hopefully you're not absolutely sick of me <laughs> by then. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the base. Uh, thank you for all the people who participated in Base Off, both in donating and entering and just coming to the stream and hanging out and just being supportive. It's been like a really great experience and I can't wait to continue it. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Take care, everybody.